Well, good afternoon and welcome to Cut to the Chase with Senator Chase. You've tuned in to our weekly call-in town hall and radio show. That's right. This is a call-in town hall with your state representative. So feel free to call in. The number here is 804-454-1366. You can ask your question right here and right now. So give us a call. Um, Again, I want to thank WNTW for the opportunity to provide this free public service to you each week. It is a unique opportunity for you, and I hope you'll take advantage of it. Um, I'm State Senator Amanda Chase. I'm your weekly radio show host. I serve you at the state level, which um, I'd like to remind many of you not to be confused with the federal level, which means in D- meets in D.C. Uh, my office is at the state capitol in downtown Richmond. Um, this is still my first term in office. I'm, I'm getting ready to complete year two. It's hard to believe. Time is flying of my four-year term. I represent the 11th senatorial district, which includes all of Amelia, all of Colonial Heights, and most of Chesterfield. Now, as many as you know, I'm a Christian, conservative, Republican, and in that order. Uh, Vice President Mike Pence used that line, and I liked it so much that I borrowed that line from him quite a bit. And uh, why do I tell you that? Because I do believe in transparency, and it's what I ran on, and um I ran on term limiting career politicians and returning the government back to the people. It's why I do cut to the chase with Senator Chase, because I feel like it's important to be transparent and approachable um, and accessible. And and that's my goal as, as your representative. I'm not paid to do this show. I do it because I think it's important to stay connected to the people that I serve. And, um, you know, since being elected in 2015, I pushed for greater transparency in the General Assembly. Uh, legislation that returns the power back to the people. Uh, One of those examples, if you remember, was restoring reciprocity of gun rights and holding Dominion accountable for coal ash cleanup to ensure we're good stewards of the James River. Um, In the Senate, uh, we each have committee assignments, and um, committee work is where most of the work is done. Most of the time what you all see on, on the screen or TV is whenever we're voting on the floor of the Senate, and by that point, most of the work has been done. Uh, One of the things that the Transparency Caucus that I co-founded has allowed for the first time ever this coming session, we will be down, you can, we're streaming those uh, live committee meetings to, so you can access that at home. And, um, you know, we didn't even have to pass legislation to do that. We actually uh, put together a letter um, signed by the Transparency Caucus, and and we had uh, members of both sides bicamerally, meaning the House and the Senate, some of our colleagues on both sides, Democrats and Republicans. I mean, transparency, I think that's a great bipartisan issue. So um, as I digress here, um, I serve on four committees. I sit on health and education, transportation, local governments, and privileges and elections. And, you know, today we're going to be talking a lot about some local government issues. And, and just to give you guys perspective, because, you know, as, as a state representative, I do try to stay in my lane. But sometimes I will <clears throat> talk about local government issues because that's the committee I serve on. And one of the one of the things that our committee does is we um, consider making up, updates and changes to city and county charters. Um, as many of you know, we're a Dillon rule state, meaning basically that the, the, gover- the, the powers that the localities get, um, they really can't do anything without approval from the General Assembly. So they have to come back to us if there's something that they want to do that, that's not covered in their charter. <clears throat> so <clears throat> many of the topics, if, as those of you who have listened and tuned in um, over time, the issues that we talk about on our show are ones that you guys have brought to my attention Um, You've written into my office, or um, it might be an issue that we've covered in the General Assembly. Uh, From time to time, uh, Congressman Bratt, who is my congressman, will will give us an update. But um, I've got quite a few few, um, things to talk about today, and so let me just give you a list of those real quick. Um, We're going to be talking about some Chesterfield issues, as I mentioned er earlier today. Um, The Centennial Celebration um, on October the 26th is coming up. Um, I'm going to hopefully get to talk about um, some of the an update on the crimes in Chesterfield. We had a recent bank robbery right here on Midlothian Turnpike in Chesterfield. Uh, we're going to briefly talk about that. Um, but one of the things I'm going to spend a good bit of time on today is the Matoka mega site because that is what I'm getting the most questions about. The Matoka mega site. In fact, I know I've got a number of people tuning in today um, because I'm addressing this. 
Um, another issue that's come up at the state level that you've seen in the news is the GOP legislators have requested a review of the Virginia Attorney General's office. And um, in addition to that, um, we're also requesting a thorough study of the Virginia Inspector General's office. And um, uh, there are a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about today. I'm going to probably have to postpone those to next week. Uh, we're going to be talking at some point about high-speed rail service. They actually had a public hearing this past week. Uh, and then also, we probably won't have to talk about this, but pay attention. The greater Richmond area is on voluntary water restrictions right now. Um, one thing I absolutely will cover is what you need to vote um, and remembering to vote. So that's just a list of topics that I'm going to try to address today. And, of course, I really would love for you all to call in if you have any questions. The number, again, is 804-454-1366. So feel free to, to give me a call today. So um, Lise Van, Van der Leiden Bruce, um, she is with the Chesterfield Historical Society of Virginia. She's also the chairman of the Library Committee and um, they are getting ready. Chesterfield County is getting ready to celebrate its centennial celebration of the Chesterfield Courthouse, which is interesting. And um, she has not called in yet. So um, as soon as she calls in, we will go straight to that. So um, until she calls in, we are going to go ahead and go straight to the Metoica mega site. Okay, so I know a lot of people are going to ask me how I feel about this. Um, let me just give you an overview for those of you who are not familiar with what the Metoica mega site is. I'm going to tell you the good parts I like about it and the parts that I don't like about it. So the thing I do like about it is that it's supposed to bring 10,000 manufacturing jobs to Chesterfield. Um, the mega site is 1,675 acres of land south of Route 10 in Chester. It is located in Chesterfield, Virginia, obviously. Um, the land was once planned to be a part of a huge residential project, which was called Banner Station. Um, that fell through uh, because of the last recession. And that was a proposed mixed-use development. It included about 5,000 housing units. Um, it's located in the southeast part of Chesterfield County. And um, the proposed Metoica megasite uh, is currently zoned for residential use. Um, it was rezoned in 2007, again, as a part of the Brand Branner Station project. And when the economy suffered the large downturn, the residential project was no longer viable, and it sat vacant. It's sat vacant since that time. The comprehensive land use plan now shows the parcel is intended to be used as a regional mixed-use corporate office research and development or industrial park type thing. So the, the Chester County Economic Development Authority currently holds an option on the parcels and is currently applying to conditionally rezone the entire property to I-3. And that's part of their strategy to try to attract a major employer to the, to the region. So the major employer is currently targeted by EDA, which is, stands for the Economic Development Authority. Um, require a site within a convenient drive of a, number one, well-educated and prepared workforce. It has to be higher education facilities and an international airport that's served by highway and a major North American railroad. They also require a minimum of 1,500 acres to assure that their facility is properly buffered from existing or proposed residential communities. The subject site meets these, and I know we have other developments that are, um, I know a lot of people have said, well, what about all the other developments that, that we've already kind of gotten started and they're kind of dormant? Um, they're saying that this is, that they, that some of these other businesses require a minimum of the 1,500 acres. So this subject site meets these and other site criteria typically used to evaluate the potential for landing a major employer of the quality targeted by the Economic Development Authority. Now, the plan proposed by Chesterfield County and the Economic Development Authority has been vetted by the Virginia Economic Development Partnership and creates a very unique opportunity for the future. 
the property is currently zoned would and we mentioned this already, would only allow for thousands of single-family homes to be constructed before significant upgrades to the county utility and road infrastructure were required. Preliminary calculations suggest the proposed use will generate less traffic than if the site were developed within the current zoning de designation. Now, when we come back from the break, um, we're going to continue to talk about the specific details of this Matoica megasite. So stay tuned. We'll be right back in four minutes. Beat the heat before the heat beats you. Call Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration now at 804-379-1155 for your free quote. Summer heat is rolling in, and Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration is offering a free Wi-Fi thermostat with any system replacement. Extend the life of your HVAC system. Save energy with a low-cost maintenance agreement. Call Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration now at 804-379-1155. That's 804-379-1155. The Chesterfield County Colonial Heights Crime Solvers Program wants to help law enforcement identify a shoplifter. On at least four separate occasions between August 11th and September 14th, a male suspect stole flat screen televisions from the Target in Chester. In each case, the suspect loaded a television onto a shopping cart and walked out of the store, bypassing the registers. The suspect is a white male. He has a bald head and a mustache goatee on his face. In at least one of the thefts, he was accompanied by a white female and a small child. Well, you can see pictures of the suspect and his car at crimesolvers.net or on Facebook at crimesolverscch. If you can identify him or if you have information about any unsolved crime in or fugitive wanted by Chesterfield or Colonial Heights, submit a tip through the Crime Solvers hotline 7480660 or through the new P3 app. Either way, you will remain anonymous and if your tip helps, you could receive a cash reward. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and take the time to solve the crime. Attention! Sorry I'm talking a little loud because I want to reach people with a hearing problem. Do you want to hear better for just $299? Yes, not thousands, but for $299, you can hear all the sounds you've been missing for years. Hearing Help Express has been helping people hear better, selling top quality hearing aids for over 30 years. Now's your best chance to hear better with hearing aids for only $299, plus a free 45-day home trial offer and you don't even need to leave your home or get a hearing test. Call now to start your risk-free 45-day home trial offer. Call 888-451-2042. 888-451-2042 for free hearing help consultation. Learn how Hearing Help Express can improve the quality of your life. Visit us online now at hearinghelp.com or call 888-451-2042. 888-451-2042. Before a trip, you program your destination into the GPS. You need the best directions to get where you want to be. You will arrive at your retirement in eight It's years. the same for retirement. You need a voice to guide you. In Richmond, that voice is Isaac Wright. Join him every Saturday at 3 and Sunday at noon on WNTW 820 The Answer. Isaac's experience can help your retirement journey feel like a drive down easy street. Take the first step by tuning in Saturdays at 3 and Sundays at noon for Retire Right with Isaac Wright. Arriving at your retirement. Welcome back to Cut to the Chase with State Senator Amanda Chase. The number here to call in is 804-454-1366. Um, in, in the first segment, we were talking about the Matoica mega site. And the question really is, should this land be rezoned to attract some type of manufacturing to the county? Um, I know that the, the, the um, Board of Supervisors has had at least four public meetings in September and October, and they're wrapping that up right now. They're um, taking input from constituents that have spoken at those meetings. Um, we're going to come back to this in a minute. I, I've got my first guest that's on today, uh, Lise Vanderleiden Bruce, and um, she is with the Chesterfield County Historical Society of Virginia. She's also the Library Committee Chair from 2004 to 2016. And um, I'm really excited to have her on today. Um, just some interesting tidbits about her is that during the early 1970s, she lived in Europe, 
working as an interpreter at the Parliament of the European Union in Luxembourg. Um, in marketing at Max Factor and Company in Paris, and in London as director of Minifest 73, which was the first international mini computer exi- exhibition in Great Britain. Um, Lise relocated to Chesterfield in 1996. She's volunteered since 1998 for the Chesterfield Historical Society. And um, it's, it's nice to have you on the phone t- today. Good afternoon. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So it sounds like uh, we have something really exciting uh, coming up that's coming up at the end of October. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, we do. We have the centennial of the courthouse, our 1917 courthouse, which is the one that faces Ironbridge Road with the old-fashioned pillars. It's going to celebrate its 100th birthday on the 26th of October, and there's a big event happening that afternoon at around 2 o'clock. It all starts, and I would like to invite all Chesterfield residents to come along. Very good. Now, is there any cost to attend the event? None at all. It is completely free. Now, now I just want to tell my listeners, how often is something free, right? Seldom. <laughs> so this is great. Bring your bring your students to this event. It's a great event. Um, the Chesterfield Historical Society of Virginia is a private nonprofit organization established in 1981, and its mission is to collect, preserve, interpret, and promote the history of Chesterfield County for the education and enjoyment of present and future generations. So, Lise, tell me what what inspired you to. Um, become active with the Chesterfield County His- Historical Society of Virginia? I was always interested in history. Obviously, I'm not exactly from around here, <laughs> from overseas, but um, I've always been fascinated by history, and when I moved to Chesterfield County 21 years ago, I discovered that this is really where it all started, here in North America, as far as English settlement was concerned. So. That's what really drew me into the Historical Society. By the way, it's the Chesterfield Historical Society of Virginia for a reason, because there is another Chesterfield County in another state, so we have to make sure that they know that this is Chesterfield County in Virginia. That's a very good point. (laughs) That's a very good point. So um, so just a reminder to folks, this is Thursday, October the 26th. It's from 1.30 to 4 o'clock, right there at the old courthouse, which is located on Ironbridge Road in Chesterfield. And um, I understand that um, there's going to be a new permanent exhibit of the original 1749 courthouse bell. Yes, that's a really interesting story because we had our first courthouse here in Chesterfield County in 1749. And at that time, we got a courthouse bell, which, of course, had to be rung every time court was in session. That courthouse bell was taken down when the 1749 courthouse was demolished, unfortunately, in 1916 to make way for the current 100-year-old courthouse in 1917. But the bell was saved, and it was hung above the 1917 courthouse. So it hung up there up until last year when we brought it down for restoration, cleaning, and stabilization. And that bell is going to go on permanent display in the county museum. Also, it's going to be unveiled on the 26th of October. However, we couldn't very well leave an empty belfry or cupola above the courthouse, so we had to find a replacement bell to hang up there, which we did. And that one is from 1860, so it's not exactly modern either. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. But the wonderful (laughs) thing about our 1749 courthouse bell is that it's three years older than the Liberty Bell. Wow, that's amazing. And, and, and it's not correct. Well, let's just talk a little bit about the, the program itself. So th- my understanding is the musical prelude provided by the um, 392nd Army Band Brass Quartet mm-hmm. um, from Fort Lee. And um, you're going to be ringing the replacement courthouse bell 100 times. Right. And you're also going to do a, a reenactment. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the interesting thing about the courthouse is that The cornerstone was laid on the 26th of October, 1917. And on the 13th of May, 1918, the doors opened for the first day of court. It took exactly eight months to build an entire courthouse. That first day of court, we have the records of the cases that were heard that first day. And what we're doing is we're reenacting five segments 
of that first day at court. Just to give you a little idea of what we're talking about, the first item was something called ardent spirits, um, otherwise known as alcohol, mm. which was destroyed. Then there, the second part was a lady called Lulu, who apparently was somebody of somewhat ill repute. Hmm. The next court case or the next item on the docket was rescheduling a trial, which is rather yeah. mundane, but it happens every day. Sure it does. The next one was the unlawful, unlawful shooting of a deer. <laughs> but I think the last one is really the funniest of all. A gentleman was pulled over and fined for having no headlights. Now, we're talking 1917. Wow. And his answer was, I didn't think I needed any. I see perfectly. <laughs> oh, gracious. Boy, Chesterfield looked a whole lot different back then, that's for it sure. sure did. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, there are going to be tours through the county museum, and it's ringing in the courthouse centennial exhibit tours through the historic 1892 jail and its Fort Lee Centennial exhibit, Mobilizing for War, yes. um, are, are also going to be available. So I'm going to say that date one more time, Thursday, October the 26th from 1.30 to 4 p.m. Thank you so much um, for coming on, the, coming on today and, and letting folks know about this great opportunity. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. So, um, so yeah, if you all have um, interesting community events that you want me to... Uh, to talk about, I'm happy to do that as well. I am going to go back to the Matoaka mega site. And, um, you know, what we're talking about here is a couple things. Um, first of all, I like to make sure that whatever we do, that it's transparent. And I do like the fact that the Board of Supervisors has had these meetings with the community to get their input. And I know many of you have expressed to me that you've gone to those meetings. I've had friends of mine to go to those meetings and, um, you know, give me some input about those. And I know some of you had some concerns about um, the way some of the meetings were done. And um, anyway, so it's good that we've had the public meetings. Those were in September and October. And... You're writing your representatives. That's great. So you've gotten me involved. And I, I'm constantly meeting with those of you. I've, I've met with the Chester Patriots, and I've met with, with other um, groups who've asked me to, to come and speak to them. I'm meeting with another group in the upcoming week, um, and I'm happy to discuss that with you. Um, let's just summarize here for those of you who are just tuning in. Um, the county is hoping to attract 5,000 to 10,000 direct and supplier jobs. Um, mega sites our project locations, and, and many of them are capable of attracting large automotive, aerospace, and other advanced manufacturing plants. Um, and many times they often bring, and they're saying in this case, 2,500 to 5,000 well-paying direct jobs and up to 10,000 total jobs, including quality jobs from the suppliers. Now, I, I know that there are a number of people that support this um, from, from the Board of Supervisors. We've got um, college presidents supporting this. Um, there's a website called metoicamegasite.com where you can also get more information on this. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back in four minutes. Stay tuned. <music> Thanks for tuning in to Cut to the Chase with State Senator Amanda Chase. And I have my first caller of the day, Dave. And Dave, where are you from? Propolis between Hopewell and Chester. Okay, very good. So, I, um, well, I don't know if that makes me a constituent of yours, but i uh, got a question for you. Sure, I will do my best to answer. Okay, as I understand it, you're on the uh, State Elections uh, Committee. Privileges and Elections, Senate? correct, yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know what kind of privileges uh, <laughs> that entails, but uh, my yeah. question is about the elections. Sure. And I'm curious as to what it would take to change Virginia law to uh, a, a system similar to what they have in Louisiana in which a statewide election, if no, none of the candidates receive 50% of the vote, there's a runoff between the top two. Because uh, we currently have a governor who received less than 50% of the uh, vote. 
meaning more people voted against him than voted for him, yet he's allowed to act as if he has a mandate. You know, that, I'll have to look into that. Um, you know, I'm interested in hearing what our, what our callers might think of that. So the question is, if you have um, a gut, like, like for instance right now, um, we have the governor's race, the lieutenant governor, right. and attorney general, and they're all running. We have right. a Republican nominee, we have a Democratic nominee, and in some cases they're they're. I believe there is a third-party candidate for yes. governor this year. Yes, there is. So uh, very much like last, the last governor's election, uh, McAuliffe got 47 percent, and the other two candidates uh, got 53 percent. So there should have been a, in my mind, we should have had a runoff between uh, McAuliffe and, uh, got his name, Democratic right. candidate. Uh, right. So just the top two without the third party right. candidate. the top two. I'll have to take a look at that. I don't think that. we should be governed by somebody with a, uh, just a minority vote. You know, I really appreciate you calling in, and um, I, will act, I will look into that and see if it's something, you know, maybe you guys can call in and let me know what you think. I think... You know, sometimes we can learn a lot from other states as well. Um, one of the things that has concerned me is that I really feel like we are predominantly a red state. It's typically we have a independent candidate that runs and for some reason t- splits the Republican vote. Yeah, exactly. That um, happened last uh, governor's election. Yes, and I'll tell you the second thing that concerns me is I feel like in many cases northern Virginia determines pretty much the outcome in presidential and governor's races. And um, I've actually introduced legislation that would recalculate the way that we configure the um, electoral votes. Currently, it's a winner-take-all system in presidential elections. Uh, Virginia gets 13 electoral votes. Mm -hmm. And so what would happen in the presidential race is, you know, President Trump um, or Clinton um, would basically, uh, Clinton got 100% of the votes, whereas they did not capture 100% of the popular vote. Right, right. So we, it would be. Proportional uh, distribution of electoral votes. Yes, and so what which, we would uh, do is. I think would mm-hmm. be acceptable. Yeah, and what we would do to make, because Southwest Virginia, I mean, really, most of Virginia is not, in my opinion, being represented. Um, because right. it's all about the way it currently is calculated. It's all toward the populist centers. And, and you know, right. if you look but at a map on election night, it's very clear to see that right. most all of the, the states are blue and all the uh, surrounding areas are red. Yes. So this new congressional district map, basically every congressional district would get an electoral college vote. So it could be split seven, six, six, seven. Right. You know, and I, I feel like it's more representative, and I'm going to put that bill in again this year, um, and okay, hopefully great. I can talk to people, and we're getting more support from that. We've had Republicans and Democrats to put that bill in, interestingly enough, over the course of history, but but um, I would love to figure out a way. I mean, our Constitution prohibits that from doing that at, at a state right. level. But well, um, for, uh, for I re- like that idea. Research and uh, let us know if that's feasible. I know there would be additional costs. But that's a uh, uh, that's another issue. Might cost less in the long run, right? <laughs> oh gracious! Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'd love to know the answer. If uh, you, you know what would it, what it would take to uh, change the uh, election laws on statewide elections. Okay, well, I appreciate you calling in, Dave, and um, I will take a look at that. We might end up with some interesting legislation, and um, I, I think it's good to compare what other. What other states are yeah. doing? There's so. one other state that does it like that, but I, I you know, memory is, uh, fails me at the moment. Uh, but I know Louisiana does it that way. Okay. But uh, appreciate it. Listen to your show every week and uh, enjoy your comments and your guests. Well, I, I greatly appreciate the feedback. So um, thanks so much for taking time to call in. Very good. So um, that number, again, if you're interested in calling in, is 804-454-1366. And um, I'm so glad Dave called in. That's great. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Cut to the Chase with Senator Chase.
beat the heat before the heat beats you. Call Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration now at 804-379-1155 for your free quote. Summer heat is rolling in, and Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration is offering a free Wi-Fi thermostat with any system replacement. Extend the life of your HVAC system. Save energy with a low-cost maintenance agreement. Call Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration now at 804-379-1155. That's 804-379-1155. The Old Dominion University football team is back on the road this week for a Conference USA Eastern Division battle against the Marshall Thundering Herd. Hi, this is Ted Alexander. Join Andy Mishaw, Doug Ripley, and me for all the action live from Huntington, West Virginia. Pre-game coverage begins Saturday afternoon at 1.30 right here on the ODU Sports Radio Network. WNTW 820 AM and 97.7 FM, The Answer. Proud home of Old Dominion University football. If your financial plan is even slightly out of tune, you may be paying too much for taxes, exposing yourself to too much risk, or retiring without a sound income plan. Listen to WNTW AM 820, The Answer, on Saturdays at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 8.30 a.m. to Financially Tuned with Big John Pulowski of Norseman Advisory Group. You can contact Big John at 757-223-1559 or visit the website at norsemanagi.com. Five days a week at the crack of dawn, John Fredericks gives you exclusive world-class non-stop coverage of our political madhouse. But what does he do on a Saturday? Saturday. 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 Saturday, noon till 3, it's the all-new Best of John Fredericks show. Best guests, best interviews, Best of John Fredericks. Saturdays at noon on WNTW AM 820, The Answer. That ad you just heard, it could have been yours. That's right, you could have just heard your ad instead of some other guys. On AM820 and 97.7 FM, you can reach more potential customers, many just like you, who can add dollars to your bottom line. Our team will work with you to make the perfect ad for your business. So give us a call at 804-717-2000. That's 804-717-2000. Your first step to becoming a household name. Before the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People was the Dale Carnegie course. Now, after 104 years, over 8 million people experience Dale Carnegie courses. People like Warren Buffett and Ronald Reagan. The Dale Carnegie Experience uses proven techniques to permanently unlock the potential of top talent, making individuals into inspiring leaders and groups into high-performing teams while reducing the financial and emotional costs of employee turnover. For more information, visit DaleCarnegieRichmond.com. That's Welcome back to Cut to the Chase with State Senator Amanda Chase, and I have Gary from Short Pump on the phone. Amanda? Yes. Gary, how yeah, are you? I'm doing fine. Yourself? I'm doing great. Thanks so much calling, calling in today. I understand you had a question about population centers. Yes. Uh, I, I heard you last week, and you were talking about the mega site in Chesterfield. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I live in... Rockville, but it's in the Gooseland area, and I've been, I live on a very small road that there's a lot of deaths on. <clears throat> I'm disgusted with what's going on in Short Pump. I just came out Broad Street, and our government has about 30 people waiting to turn right. And, you know, there's no consideration for the overpopulation. And I'm curious, is there any chance that <clears throat> since Hillary did not take over the New World Order uh, position that she was supposed to have, is there a chance for us to take this country back? Absolutely. I completely believe that. And, you know, to your point, um, boy, there's so many things I want to talk about. You just had a jackpot. Um, the first of all, I would say I've never been more hopeful than I am right now. Um, I think that by Trump being president, I think we are seeing a, a breakup of that culture in D.C. Um, I like that he's a bull in a china shop. I just I love it. Um, as a small business owner myself, I feel like I'm kind of a similar bull in a china shop, if you will. Um, you know, if you don't know the culture, you know, you just do what makes sense according to the private sector rules, you know, um, 
and and I think that part is great. Um, I would I would also tell you that I think Congressman Brad is doing a great job. I mean he he and myself, President Trump. There's so many um, others that are out there. I'm I'm just you know t we're we're trying to return this culture or or, re or have a culture that we return the power back to the people. And we're listening, and we're in the, in your communities. Um, I know I've been out every night this week, um, meeting and talking to different groups of people that have concerns and interests. And um, I know this is supposed to be a part-time job, but you know, between social media and, and everything else, I feel like it's my job. And um, and so do others, uh, like Congressman Brad, and you know, to well, to I, respond I, to your. I thank you. Be, I thank you because I, I I think there's a lot of us who. The mainstream doesn't, they might be becoming aware of us, but I think we have the power to correct the wrongs, and I appreciate your work. Uh, limited terms, the last person who just called, uh, thank you, and I will continue to listen. Okay, well, listen, thanks so much for tuning in today and, and making time to call. And, you know, I also sit on, on transportation as well, and um, I know I, let a, I get a lot of phone calls about those local roads. And what I will tell you is this. At the state Senate level, you know, we pretty much we take a look at and are responsible for the interstates. It's your board of supervisors that's going to handle the back roads and kind of the secondary streets. So um, call your board of supervisors about that issue. Um, you, you were talking about the 30 people um, that were trying to turn right there um, in Goochland. So um, contact your board of supervisors. I think Susan Lascalette still on the Board of Supervisors in Goochland, um, that might be an opportunity for you as well. So um, I have um, Mike on the phone. He wants to talk about the mega site. So let's see if we can get Mike tuned in here. Yes, I'm here. Mike, tell us where you're calling from. I'm from, uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Chesterfield. and um... Very good. Um, so what question do you have about mega the mega site? Um, yes. The public meetings that the county held. Um, Did you attend one of those meetings? I attended all four meetings. Okay, boy, am I glad yep. you called in. Good. What yep. was your impression of the meetings? First of all, did well, you think they were transparent? Uh, not, not at all. Um, the first meeting was set up. Uh, I heard many people describe it like a science fair project, where displays of uh, of from different departments in the county, uh, the transportation department, uh, CETA had a had a, a table, um, and the schools had a table. Uh, they had J.K. Timmons, which is a, a engineering company there, um, and basically you walked in and um, you were expected to go to these tables and ask your questions individually to those uh, particular uh, department. Uh, whoever was there representing them. It was not a public meeting in that hmm. there was no presentation uh, given and there were no question and answer uh, periods uh, in a public forum. So that when that when I saw that, uh, a group of us uh, citizens got together and tried to get enough quiet in the room. There were probably 300 people in the room at the time. <laughs> And uh, we tried to get enough quiet to ask some questions. Uh, it was not very successful because people were still talking at the tables, et cetera. But I, did, I think after that, the county did get the uh, message that they needed a different uh, forum for presenting this uh, Matoaka mega site. So, so, so the, the next, so the, the next three meetings, the next three meetings were held. Um, in um, uh, the what you would think of as a normal um, like presentation. presentation, and then question and answer period. Now, what was what was your thought of of that particular? I mean, we've got thirty seconds, and I've got to go to the break. But will you stay okay. on after the break? I want you to stay on. Certainly. Um, Certainly. We'll be we have a four minute break, but we'll be right back, Mike. And and I appreciate okay. you calling in, and we're going to continue sure. to um, talk to you about this mega site. Stay tuned. We'll sure. be right back after the break.
why do I have a problem with millennials? And I'm sick and tired of hearing the word, and I'm sick and tired of catering to them, and I'm sick and tired of hearing what they think, because they don't think. All they do is spew the data that they get off an iPhone or what's been put into their silly little heads in the, in the public schools. Tune in to The Savage Nation, weekdays, here on Richmond's Choice for Conservative Talk Radio, WNTW 820, The Answer. Beat the heat before the heat beats you. Call Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration now at 804-379-1155 for your free quote. Summer heat is rolling in, and Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration is offering a free Wi-Fi thermostat with any system replacement. Extend the life of your HVAC system. Save energy with a low-cost maintenance agreement. Call Daniel's Heating and Refrigeration now at 804-379-1155. That's 804-379-1155. With State Senator Amanda Chase here, and I have Mike. Mike, we've got a few more minutes before the show c concludes, but I want to get you in here. So, um, so, you, so it sounds like they've changed a couple things to make it better. Did, was that better? The last meeting that you had was it more transparent when they had the presentation and the question and answer session? Well, it depends on what you mean by transparent. Um, we were certainly allowed to ask questions after the presentation. Um, we had questions about the presentation itself. Uh, some of the, the things presented didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, the questions that were asked, uh, many questions were not, there were no answers. There were, there were answers such as, uh, well, we, we think this will happen, we believe, we hope. Uh, so there were a lot of hopes and prayers from the county, but, but nothing uh, concrete. And that's that's the biggest concern, I think, of most uh, most residents. Um, well, Mike, that's this. what I'm hearing, and I actually talked to Speaker-elect um, Kirk Cox about this, and he shares my concerns as well. By the way, and and we're going to be talking to him about that. I've got Mark calling, and we've we've only got like eight minutes left for the show to come um, to conclude. So, Mike, tune in next week. I am going to continue talking about. Um, the Matuaka mega site, because a lot of you still have questions, and I want to get all of y'all that want to come on the show and talk. So call in next week too. Um, <laughs> and Can we're I gonna... just ask uh, yes. one one question yes. just for the, for the show? Uh, where is the money coming from for this? Okay, project. I can answer that question because I, you know, and what I've done is I've done a lot of homework by going to this. It's MatuakaMegasite.com. And um, that's where I got a lot of this information. But I saw it was coming from three places. Um, and I'm looking through my notes here. But off the top of my head, it's coming from the county. The county's paying for it. The roads are coming from state and federal monies. And um, they haven't talked to me about it. So um, anyway, maybe they've talked to, to Speaker-elect Cox about it. And I just haven't been on that conversation. But those conversations will be done. Okay, I found it right here. Who will pay for the infrastructure? The county will pay for the land and other in on-site infrastructure. State and federal funds will be used to pay for road improvements, including the east-west freeway and rail. We do not plan to build the infrastructure until an identified project has committed to the site. Um, part of the EDA's due diligence was to determine a return on the investment for the project. We can say with confidence that a project with a minimum of $1 billion in investments will create a substantial return to the county. Um, the, uh, the additional benefit of creating jobs, paying good wages in the county also cannot be overstated. So that's the county's response on their uh, matilicamegasite.com. So um, thanks, Mike, for calling in. I have Mark. Mark, I have like two minutes left, but I'm going to do my best to answer your question. Mark, are you there? Okay, Mark is gone. Okay. Okay. Um, before I leave, well, I'm going to talk about the Matoka Mecca site next week. And just so you all know, I have reached out to um, to your local elected uh, members as well as to Dr. Casey, and they are going to come on. Um, their Thursdays have been tied up. Um, it'll probably be November before I get them on, but I, I feel like it's important to get this information to you as soon as I can. 
and, um, and, and try to help them to help you just to get the answer to some of these questions. So MatoicaMegasite.com. Go visit that. There's the, the slides presented at the October 2nd and October 3rd community meetings are there, and they can be downloaded there. Um, let me just tell you in general where I am. Um, I, I don't want to do anything where we're picking winners and losers. I, I voted against um, giving monies and grants and incentive monies to different businesses. I never got that with my business. And, and you know, you just get creative and figure things out, right? Um, I believe in doing something across the board that will help everybody, like my bill that would lower the corporate income tax, the state income tax, from 6% to 2.5%. That helps everybody. When we when we set up these advisory boards and, and we give out grant money to try to help businesses, you're also hurting somebody else that did not get that grant money. I just don't think that's the role of government, just in general. And I'm not specifically talking about this um, Matilica mega site, but I'm just telling you in general um, that in the state budget every year, I pull out Go Virginia money, I pull out economic incentive money, and I vote against it because I, I just, I'm pro business, but I just think that's the wrong way to be pro business. I think that's kind of capital cronyism, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Maybe you believe, maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. That that's okay. I have to remind you of a very important deadline that's coming up, and that is coming up. Uh, when do you vote? Right. When do you vote? When is the election? It is Tuesday, November the 7th. This is very important. This coming Monday, October the 16th, is the deadline to register to vote or to update any existing registration. It's this coming Monday. Um, the deadline to request an absentee ballot to be mailed to you is 5 p.m. on Tuesday, the October the 31st, and your request must be received by the registrar by 5 p.m. Um, you can vote you can apply to vote absentee online, but the deadline to request an absentee ballot by appearing in person, and by the way, do this. If you're not going to be in town, go to the registrar's office during their voting, during their um, regular business hours. You can vote in person. And, um, you know, just by, I, I don't like all, I mean, my mail, unfortunately, I have to tell you, is it's not been very reliable lately. So I like to just go in person and make sure that everything is taken care of so it gets done. So I would just go to the, if you live in Chesterfield, go to the Chesterfield Registrar's off, office, and you can go there and you can um, get an absentee ballot. You can you can appear in person and just take care of it all at once. So um, there you go. So you can apply online, apply in person. You can vote in absentee. You can vote in person absentee. That's another option. Um, and there is information on the website. So if, if you didn't capture this information and you have questions about what reasons do I have um, that I can vote absentee, there's, there's a whole list of those too. Um, one of those being, you know, pregnancy. Um, if you're a student attending college or university that's outside of a locality of residence, that's one. Um, the other thing is if you're working or commuting to and from home for 11 hours or, or more, you can actually um, – vote absentee. All right, that's that's the conclusion of my hour here on Cut to the Chase with Senator Chase. Let's call in next Thursday. We're going to have another show on the Matoica mega site and um, have your friends call in. We'll have a whole lot of you. Um, we'll listen to all your concerns and, and I will give that information to the Board of Supervisors. Thanks for tuning in today on Cut to the Chase with Senator Chase. With Senator Chase. With Senator Chase. With Senator Chase. With Senator Chase.